Hey everybody, welcome to my side yard. <laughs> We're not out at a cool location today, but we've gotten to take our Opus 15 camper on a couple of great trips uh, so far in the last couple of months of owning it. We've had it up in the San Juan Mountains and recently we took a quick trip up to the Rim in Northern Arizona just to see some of the changing fall color that's hitting uh, parts of Northern Arizona right now, show our kids the changing leaves and just camp in the pines. It was so beautiful. Uh, so today we're going to take a closer look at the Opus 15 because after having a few nights in it now, we've got some things we love about it and a few things we don't love as much. Um, so that's where we're headed in today's video. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to 4 by Trail. I'm Caleb and today we're taking a closer look at our Opus 15 camper, sharing a handful of things we love about it and a handful of things we don't love as much. Uh, so if you're in the market for an off-road camper, there's so many great options out there. Hopefully this conversation today will help steer you in the right direction and give you some things to think about when making that decision. We'll also take a quick kind of 10 cent tour of the camper today. It won't be a full tour. Uh, we won't be talking about specs or dimensions or things like that. We will be doing that in a future video. My wife and I want to uh, set it up and do a full walkthrough tour of every little nook and cranny. But today will just be a quicker overview and uh, some pros and cons of things we like and don't like. So let's start on the interior of the Opus. Come on inside. Well, here inside the Opus, um, let's start off with some positives. The headroom is awesome. Once you pop up the top of the camper at camp, there's a good foot. I'm a six foot tall guy and there's a good foot of clearance above me. Uh, really, really spacious, gives a nice feel, a lighter feel, tons of windows. Um, and the big thing for us was the sleeping setup. Definitely designed for a family of four in mind. Uh, these two bunks up here in the front where our kids sleep. They're actually spacious enough for adults to sleep into, six plus foot. Uh, people can sleep and be really comfortable up there. And then the king bed in the back is awesome for my wife and I. So that was a compromise we were willing to make with getting a, a bit of a larger off-road camper, which is what this is. This is definitely not as nimble as some of the off-road campers out there. It's it's a, it's a heavy beast, um, but it's very capable still. And to have this sort of sleeping setup when we get to camp and just want a good night's rest, our kids sleep great in here. We sleep great in here. The other thing that's super nice uh, about the Opus 15 is the fully enclosed um, wet bath, you know, head here inside the camper. There's a shower, sink, toilet, all in one. And uh, it's really nice to have that inside and to have it be able to be closed off and have its own little room there is a really, really nice feature. Probably our all around favorite feature of the camper outside, inside, just overall is the Truma Combi heating system. It's what heats our water and the ambient temperature inside the cabin here. It is awesome. It runs off of the two uh, propane tanks up front and uh, it, you've got a digital thermostat here on the wall. You can set you know, your water temp and your ambient temp. It's a pretty efficient system too. Uh, when we got back from that six day trip, we were you know, cranking the heat every night. We used a lot of hot water and we still had propane left over probably a third to a half of a tank left over when we got back. So um, we're pretty happy with that. One of the things we really don't like about the layout inside is the table. Uh, the dimensions of the table, yeah, it's it's portable so you can remove it, thankfully. We didn't even run it on the last trip. Uh, we just kept it stored and didn't uh, use the table at all. And it was so much nicer in here. On the Colorado trip, we had the table up so we could eat inside because it was you know rainy a couple of days. And when that table's up, there's very little room to move inside the cabin here. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes just taking that table down. So our hope and recommendation would be that Opus makes some sort of uh, table that has a leaf that can fold down so you could access maybe just a smaller part of the table when you need it, or even just make the overall table smaller in general. Another drawback to the interior is the drain in the shower. Um, the shower pan itself is very flat. There's very little taper to it. So we found that unless you get the camper exactly dialed in level, uh, which is pretty hard to do, uh, it really doesn't drain out very easily. So there's a lot of pooling water back behind the toilet or depending on how your, you know, the, your campsite is set up, you're gonna see where you're level or not level really quick once you start using the shower in there. So this camper has the Dometic uh, Penguin AC unit up here on the roof. 
but you can't use it unless you're connected to shore power. So it would be super cool if there was a way, I mean, we did the lithium battery upgrade. We've got three Battleborn batteries that are super nice and three 100 watt solar panels on the roof. There's some nice features for, you know, having power off grid here, but you can't use the AC unit unless you're connected to shore power just because of the draw that it has. So uh, you can get a separate generator and run a generator outside uh, the camper that will allow the AC unit to run. Um, but it would be super cool if Opus just included that generator or included a way to be able to run your AC off grid because we're not plugging into shore power very often except when we're here at home. I mean, we're taking this thing off grid and doing what it's made to do, which is get out there and, and just be off grid away from any kind of shore power. The last drawback that we have to the interior would just be the mattress uh, for the king size bed back here. It's easily remedied just to replace it, but it's not very comfortable. Um, it's stiff. If you like a really stiff mattress, uh, you might find it okay, um, but there's a ridge in the middle because it folds in half. So you kind of have to stay on your sides. Uh, there's no meeting in the middle because that ridge is really uncomfortable. So we're probably going to swap it out for like two memory foam mattresses, like smaller mattresses that we can stack uh, whenever we fold up the camper. All right, let's head back outside and look at some pros and cons out there. This outdoor kitchen is awesome. I love cooking outside as part of camping to me. So having the kitchen not in the interior is not a big deal. It's actually a positive in my opinion. Um, there is a nice awning. If it's raining, you can deploy the awning and cook outside uh, regardless of the weather. So this stainless uh, kitchen here with hot running water, with a drying rack, prep space, uh, four burner stove with the remote propane hookup right there and then also an extra prep space that slides out of the end. Uh, it's really versatile and we love it. The only drawback to this part, you know, the kitchen out here is storage. There's really not a lot besides this one drawer. And right now we use it for our dishes. And once the dishes are in there, there's no room for, you know, any kind of food or anything like that. So uh, utensils store in the drawers, foil, things like that but all our food has to be inside. So you end up going in and out quite a bit. It's like, oh, I forgot the, you know, the bread or whatever, and you just go, go in and out. It's kind of a pain. So it'd be awesome if there was somehow a way to store our dry goods out here as well. They also give you a boatload of keys. This is only about half the amount of keys they give you because uh, they give duplicates, but uh, there's about four or five different keys required to open the various things on the camper. Um, I feel like it could be two or three keys, not four or five. Uh, it's a small thing, but it's, it'd be nice to have to carry a few less keys. By the time you add your wheel lock and your tongue lock for the trailer and all those things, it starts to be just a lot of keys to carry around and keep track of. What's really cool, though, is out here there is a uh, connection for the TV. If you notice, there is a TV inside, and it can be unhooked and hooked on out here. There's uh, speakers on the exterior of the camper. There's some kind of cool mood lighting thing on the handle, and then some ambient uh, lighting as well. The ambient lighting isn't abundant. Um, I could use probably another scene light or two if I was having it my way, um, but it's nice to be able to hook up TV. Uh, there's a sound system built in. You can play music at camp if you'd like, uh, so that's kind of a cool feature out here. You know, one of the things that's kind of interesting is this uh, prep space. You have to use a key to lower it, and there's definitely been a couple of times where I'll already be cooking and I need to set something somewhere, and it's like, oh, I got to go grab the keys from inside the camper, and figure out which key it is and then oh yeah it's this one and get the uh, prep space down so it'd be super cool if you know Opus had just a push button option for lowering uh, this prep table out here this table is super handy especially in uh, light of not having a ton of storage outside um, which we talked about already so storage you know prep space it's all really important when you're outside uh, cooking at camp so uh, yeah this table's nice but push button uh, deployment would be a little bit nicer Probably the, one of the coolest features from a technical standpoint is the articulating hitch. This is a pretty big uh, camper to have an articulating hitch on, and it's just super beefy, super cool, and it has already come in handy and allowed us to get out to some spots that uh, we wouldn't be able to take a typical um, camper out to. So really cool to have that feature. It makes this whole thing uh, pretty capable, along with the heavy-duty suspension and the clearance this thing has. Um, I'm excited to kind of push it more to the limits. We haven't really taken it on anything too rough yet, 
um, but I'm excited to because I think this thing is actually super capable. My thought is the only thing that's going to hold it back is just the sheer weight of it and the size. Uh, you're not going to be able to get into any super tight and technical trails with it, um, and then you'll be limited by the vehicle towing it if it can handle uh, the weight, you know, pulling this weight over obstacles and whatnot. But the plan is to push this thing a little more in the future. Um, once we get the Gladiator build uh, hopefully finished before too long, we're about to dive into that here on the channel. Um, we're going to see if it can tow uh, with 40s. Uh, we'll see. I think, it, I think we will. It's going to have the right gearing to get it back close to factory spec. So my plan is to be able to tow this thing and hit some rougher stuff with uh, the JT towing it and we'll see how that all goes down, but it's gonna be fun to kind of push this camper a little bit more in the future. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Uh, there's so many features on this thing that we haven't dove into yet. I'm excited to get into the specs and how much water the tanks hold and the electrical system and some of the capabilities of this thing are pretty awesome. So stay tuned for you know a full actual tour of this thing at some point. But hey, we've got the JT build coming up on the channel. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming up, so make sure you're subscribed. And uh, if you have any questions about the Opus or any of our other vehicles, feel free to drop a comment below. I'd love to interact with you there. And I'll see you guys soon in the next video. Thanks for watching.